We'll be discussing an interesting case now. It's a term baby born to a gravida 4 para 3 mother by elective cesarean. The mother had well controlled gestational diabetes. The parents are first cousins and uh, they're from Pakistan originally. The birth weight of 3.8 kilograms. The baby was transferred to the NICU in view of respiratory distress. Baby was started on nasal CPAP and because of the persisting distress, blood gas uh, showing higher CO2 and a rising FiO2, the baby was changed to NIPPV. The chest X-ray was suggestive of transient achipnea of newborn. The blood gases initially showed respiratory acidosis which improved subsequently with the NIPPV. Uh, initially, we gave ampicillin and gentamicin for 48 hours. This was discontinued as per the unit practice when the blood culture was negative and the CRP continued to be normal. As was the unit practice on babies on respiratory distress, we started tube feeds, uh, two hourly feeds and went on to full feeds weaning off the IV fluid. We had express breast milk. Baby continued to stay on the NAPPV and when we attempted to wean, it was not successful. Uh, it took almost seven days before we considered alternative diagnosis as it was an atypical pattern. There was no evidence of infection. The repeat CRP white cell count was normal and the blood culture was negative. <coughs> we even sent the secretions for culture, but it was negative as well. So we wondered what could be the possible reasons for persisting symptoms. Of course, inflammation is one of the factors, but it is atypical and uh, we were debating whether to go for nebulized budesonide uh, to reduce inflammation as it could be uh, congenital pneumonia or TTN related inflammation causing problems. The uh, tests were not suggestive of infection. We did echocardiography which was normal and uh, there was no obvious congenital anomaly on other testing or clinical examination. The airway abnormalities were considered but there was no strider and there was uh, TTN like features, streaky lung shadowing on repeat x-ray as well. A congenital surfactant deficiency could be considered but obviously the x-ray was not suggestive and the severity was not significant. The baby needed pressure but it was not uh, severe. Cystic fibrosis obviously could be uh, one of the differential diagnoses and other conditions would include primary ciliary dyskinesia. Incidentally, when we had a discussion with the family about this atypical course and the different possibilities, mother mentioned that the baby's older brother, who is now 10 years old, gets recurrent sinusitis and he also has heart disease. And she mentioned that the heart was on the other side. So obviously there was dextrocardia, with, which we got from the report later as a VSD. And he has recurrent sinusitis. So it obviously points to a family history of primary ciliary dyskinesia. And there are many case reports of primary ciliary dyskinesia presenting with prolonged respiratory distress in a TTN-like presentation in babies, which takes time to resolve. So this made us think strongly of this possibility. We were almost sure that this would be because of the parental consanguinity and the sibling's diagnosis. So the child was started on regular saline nebulization just to keep the secretions moist enough for the baby to clear with suction as needed. We trained the baby parents in suctioning in case uh, this was needed at home and updated on care of the baby. We managed to wean the NAPPV to CPAP. We didn't use uh, budesonide. And over the next two weeks, the baby was weaned off CPAP. Once we had this differential, we knew it might take time and the parents were reassured and they were happy to wait as well. The baby then established suck feeding and discharged home. Even though we organized suction machine and things, they never needed it at home. They needed the regular saline nebulization whenever there was noisy breathing and the parents felt this helped. Apart from that, uh, we monitored the baby closely at follow-up. We did the ENT review and a nasal mucosal biopsy was done uh, soon after we thought of the diagnosis while the baby was in the NICU. Uh, it took time to organize. The test was done after a month of age, just before discharge, and the result took two further weeks. It confirmed uh, ciliary dysmotility and primary ciliary dyskinesia was confirmed. The older sibling has Cartagener syndrome because of the dextrocardia, sinusitis, and uh, lung inflammation. After two years, we reviewed the child regularly as well, and the child has been shown to be growing well, the normal development for age. There were no significant concerns apart from nasal congestion and intermittent wheezing episodes. 
the parents were counseled about avoiding consanguinity in the entire family and despite our telling actually they attended a wedding of a first cousin who married another cousin so it's very common in this uh, population and that's one of the reasons why consanguinity should be avoided primary ciliary dyskinesia is a very interesting condition it's a rare problem the incidence is 1 in 16000 to 1 in 20000 deliveries there is a lot of genetic heterogeneity and uh, usually it's autosomal recessive the main uh, condition presentation is related to impaired ciliary motility the presentation is often in the neonatal period with persisting respiratory distress which suggests that motile cilia have a role in the fluid clearance when the lung transitions from the fetal to the neonatal stage there can be recurrent respiratory or sinus infections and in the male there is infertility there is a group of cilia which have an embryologic and nodal cilia embryologic function in organ movement and that is the reason we get dextrocardia situs inverses in 40 to 50% of babies with primary ciliary dyskinesia and uh, this is cartagena where you have dextrocardia bronchiectasis sinusitis and infertility initially it was described as immotile cilia syndrome and later studies showed that most cilia were motile but they exhibited a stiff uncoordinated and ineffective or rotary beat i'll be showing you a couple of videos on this the name was subsequently changed to primary ciliary dyskinesia secondary ciliary defects can happen after multiple uh, causes of epithelial injury recurrent infection and so on and smoking is one of the factors which affects ciliary motility that is one of the reasons why infections are more common in smokers so cilia and flagella are evolutionarily ancient structures and uh, they are present for a long time they are ancient the structure and function is rigidly conserved across the phylogenetic spectrum the role in cell motility and transport of fluids over the mucosal surfaces so they have been recognized to have a sensory function that modulates elements of development and cell function as well both motile and sensory cilia are composed of highly organized arrays of microtubules and attendant accessory elements so this is in the structure of a cilium we have the uh, motile cilia and the non motile or primary monocilium which is sensory and this is the one the nodal function so we have in kidney tubule bile duct pancreatic ducts cartilage uh, photoreceptor and in the embryonic uh, nodal cilium they have the rotary motion so we have the uh, the dynein arms 9 plus 2 and 9 plus 0 which is the rotary motion and uh, the planar motion multiple cilia on a cell is seen in brain airways reproductive tract as well so we have different types of cilia and you can see the embryonic function as well that's why we get dextrocardia and uh, the reproductive tract function is very important that's why we get infertility so there are three basic groups motile cilia which have 9 plus 2 cilia with attendant dynein arm structure so these are the dynein arms which help with the movement and the non motile ones do not have the dynein arms and uh, typically related to mucosal clearance then we have the 9 plus 0 primary cilia they lack the dynein arms uh, and the motile 9 plus 0 primary cilia which possess dynein arms which are the embryonic node cilia they show a slow whirling movement which is not waveform and uh, usually it directs the flow leftward across the node necessary for uh, the left right asymmetry and that's why we get hyperplasplenism and things as well in the dextrocardia syndrome sometimes situs inverses and so this is the surface of the epithelial cells and the cilia on the top and this is the closer appearance of the cilia and this is the anatomy which we discussed so the dynein arms help in pulling across in a leftward movement they have a waveform motion so the central pair of microtubules and the peripheral pair of uh, microtubules so that's the nine pairs and the one central pair we have the ciliary membrane we have the outer dynein arm and the inner dynein arm so this is the anatomy of the normal cilia and here both the dynein arms are absent as in the kidneys and so on and uh, this is absent outer dynein arm and the absent inner dynein arm so you can see the outer dynein arm here and the inner dynein. so different types are possible so this video will illustrate the normal uh, ciliary motility which is in a 
waveform pattern. This is the one that typically moves the secretions in the airway. And this will illustrate the abnormal circular ciliary motility, which is seen in primary ciliary dyskinesia. So this is like a meaningless movement. There is some movement, but it doesn't uh, go in a particular direction and it doesn't help in clearing. So the gold standard test for primary ciliary dyskinesia is electron microscopic ultrastructural analysis of the respiratory cilia obtained by nasal scraping or bronchial brush biopsy. There is limited clinical genetic testing currently available and nasal nitric oxide measurement has been shown as a screening test. Nasal nitric oxide is extremely low in patients with primary ciliary dyskinesia. It's less than 10 to 20 percent of normal. So this is an interesting fact that we can use nasal nitric oxide measurement as a supplementary test while you're waiting for the brush border biopsy. And remember, it's not a straightforward procedure. You need the specific kit, you need the reagent, and then it has to be transported to the central lab. The clinical features affect multiple systems. So it affects the middle ear, chronic otitis media, conductive hearing loss, nose and paranasal sinuses can be affected. So rhinitis, sinusitis, polyposis. And the lung can be affected with neonatal respiratory distress, chronic cough, recurrent pneumonia, and bronchiectasis. In the genitourinary tract, we discuss male and possibly female infertility because of the fallopian tube involvement. And in lateral T defect, situs inversus totalis, heterotaxy. Uh, and in central nervous system, you may have hydrocephalus uh, because of the ependymal ciliary motility problems. And retinitis pigmentosa is an interesting association. Situs inversus totalis occurs in approximately 50% of patients with PCD and 25% with situs inversus have PCD as well. And 6% of these have heterotaxy syndromes. This includes asplenia, there is right isomerism and Ivmark syndrome, polysplenia with left isomerism syndromes. Uh, there can be chronic wet cough needing recurrent antibiotic therapy. And if this is noticed in the history, we should test for PCD even if there is no situs inversus because uh, only 50% have situs inversus. Nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, nasal polyps, recurrent otitis media may be other pointers, especially if it runs in the family as well. Life expectancy is good with supportive management, timely antibiotic treatment, and preventing bronchiectasis. So timely use of antibiotics is important. Saline nebulization may be considered. Uh, approach should be similar in terms of management, like cystic fibrosis, however, if bronchiectasis develops, we need expert management. Luckily, our patient did not have bronchiectasis or significant lung problems. The sibling is at higher risk. ENT problems have to be watched for. Infertility is a risk and they need to be counseled. And of course, genetic counseling to prevent intermarrying in the family. So uh, this is an interesting case. If you have any experience similar to this, please share. Thank you.